Hello and welcome to another Spark AR tutorial. What we're going to be doing today is we're going to be looking at how we can create an animation and import it into our project. So what we have here is just a looping fire uh, animation uh, with no background layer. So it's literally just our effect on a transparent composition. I'm using After Effects to produce this, but you could use any number of programs. So within After Effects, if I want to export this with RGB values, I need to make sure I go to File and export and add it to render queue. Now it's important to note that we want to try and keep our canvas size small. So in this case, I'm actually only using a canvas size of 500 by 500 uh, because the more frames we have, the more laggy it will be when it comes to playing back on our device. I've also tried to keep the time of our effect quite short. And another thing I could do to improve uh, the end performance could be I could actually adjust the frame rate to be potentially uh, uh, less. This means there'd be less frames per image. It would look a little bit more stuttery. But this is something that I could possibly resolve within Spark AR anyway. And this just means we have less images per frame, meaning our file size is smaller, and optimization is the key when it comes to Spark AR. So with my effect generated, I'm going to go to File, Export, Add to Render Queue. And I need to make sure that whatever program I'm using to export my animation in, I need to make sure it's set to be able to have us, allow us to have alpha channels. And it also needs to be able to export, uh, in this case, if I want to keep transparency, as a PNG sequence. So I go to Output Module. I'm going to change my format in after effects to PNG sequence and I'm going to change my video output channels to be RGB plus alpha. This means it keeps our color values and the transparency. If I just went with RGB it would give us a default white or black background which wouldn't be any good for what we're after. Likewise if I went with alpha it would just give us the alpha channel and not the color data. So I would want RGB plus alpha and I'm just going to click OK and I'm going to make sure that I save this into a new folder and I'm going to call this Spark AR Fire Animation just so I know what it is onto my desktop so let's navigate to that folder that I've just created there is a lot of files on here at the moment which you can see I see I need to tidy that up uh, I'm not going to save it in a subfolder because I don't need to and you'll notice that it will keep the file name as the composition name and these uh, little hashtag symbols are the frame number so it would be like 00001, 00002 etc etc because it's going to be sequentially uh, images essentially so if I go to save and then hit the render because I've optimized it and kept it quite small it didn't take too long to render out but I can go to my desktop now we get to my folder and you should notice I have a series of 36, in this case, images, each showing the animation as a separate frame. So now I can open up my Spark AR. So I've already done a little bit of work in advance, so I've actually already added my target tracker just by going to Add Object and adding my target tracker, making sure that the Instagram option was turned off in Edit Properties. And I've already imported my target which in this case is the same post that I've used in a previous tutorial. So what I need to do now is I need to go down to my asset panel and go to add asset and I want to add my animation sequence. Where it says texture I'm going to choose file. I'm going to navigate to where my frames are stored so in this case this will be my spark AR fire animation folder and I'm going to select all of my frames like so and hit open. Now this is why uh, optimization is key because if you've got a lot of frames and you've got a lot of data this can take a while because I've kept this quite small and quite compacted and I haven't got high frame rate it isn't taking too long to import. So what that's done is it's got my animation sequence and I have this composition I now want to add a plane to my target tracker so I can right click on it, select add plane, bring my plane to the front of my poster. 
I'm going to scale this up a little bit so it's a bit more noticeable and zoom in so you can see what we're doing and on this plane that's been created which is a child of my target tracker I'm going to just create a new material and on this material I'm going to select my texture to be my animation sequence and you'll notice that now we have this looping animation uh, video of our fire now you notice I've got this grey box as I've sort of mentioned in a previous video we need to go to uh, enable, we need to turn on alpha test to get rid of any uh, of the grey and as you see we've got this sort of white outline which isn't desired I need to adjust the cutoff uh, levels to remove those white pixels that I don't want at this point I might also change it to a flat shader so we don't have it influenced by the light in our scene and this should better represent our, how our animation was created in After Effects for example and now this animation will at the moment currently indefinitely loop and in a following video I will show you how we can control this animation to play as and when we want it to rather than just constantly looping but for now I'm just going to quickly show you that we could adjust the frame rate by selecting the animation sequence so let's say we go to 60 frames a second you notice our fire is now going more erratic if I go back to 12 you notice it's now slower so we can also adjust the speed by adjusting our frame rate down here and we could also adjust whether it loops or not or whether it just plays once and then stops on its final frame so that's just been a very uh, brief introduction on how we can generate a animation sequence or image sequence using a program such as After Effects. I'm not going to go through how I create how to create the effect in After Effects, so there's plenty of tutorials online that go through that. Uh, needless to say, it's essentially just making sure that we keyframe out each of our frames that we want us to do and have a movement and making sure that we keep everything within our canvas because if things go off our canvas size or canvas box it won't appear in our animation obviously. So that has been a tutorial looking at animation, uh, target tracking within Spark AR. Thank you for watching.